Everything will be okay now. I know the basics of healing arts, but my skills pale in comparison. What an unspeakable mess this has all become. Just look at the state of our city. Even the Zugals have stopped heeding our commands. Whatever did we do to deserve this? You really have no clue what might have caused this? Would that I have. Alas, there was no warning, no prior decree. His Highness must have deemed it unnecessary for us to know. We have no choice but to grin and bear it. But do my eyes deceive me? Could I really be standing in the presence of his lordship, Dohalim of the House Ilkaris? I believed he was on Dana. Your eyes do not deceive you. It is I, one and the same. I have returned to fulfill a special duty, the details of which I cannot divulge. As your lordship wishes. First Lanagus mutates beyond recognition, now this unexpected visit. The Sovereign's plans are inscrutable indeed. The Ilkaris House has produced a great many lords over the centuries. I shall be praying for your victory in the latest crown contest. Your good wishes do me an honor. Lordship, oh, what a great honor it is to finally meet you. I descended to Dana during the last crown contest also. Alas, when the contender I was backing failed to clinch the title, I returned. I witnessed the deaths of so many slaves. Indeed. Sorry to interrupt, but we're looking for a woman dressed all in red. Have you seen anyone of that description? All red, eh? No, I can't say I remember anyone like that. I imagine she'd stand out somewhat, too. Yeah. What about down on Dana during the crown contest? You didn't see anyone like that hanging around the lord you were serving? What's with all these questions? I've never seen her, okay? Not recently or otherwise. Why do you want to find her anyway? Never mind. Forget I asked. Sorry to take up your time. Is everything okay? You look a little lost. Hmm? Oh, yes. I can't seem to find my way home, is all. I was just about to make my umpteenth attempt at a new route. I was hoping to head this way myself. The situation is a real pain, huh? I suppose the Sovereign knows best. I daren't stay here too long, though. 
A lower caste can only linger around these parts for so long before I outstay my welcome. I was hoping to avoid it, but maybe I'll have to go that way after all. You mean you know another way round? Lord Dohali Milkaris! But how? Last I heard, you were in Dana competing in the crown contest. Yes, strange, isn't it? If you know another route, we'd be grateful if you could tell us. But, but of course. Please forgive me. There's a wall that sprung up ahead of here, with what looks to be an entrance in it. I thought maybe it was a passageway between the different quarters, but I've no way of knowing for sure. It's worth investigating, at least. I shall go and assess the situation. In the meantime, wait for me here. If it looks safe, I'll come and let you know. You'd really do that for me? A lord troubling himself for someone of my lowly status? Our lot in life is of little consequence. We are both Renan, first and foremost. Oh, why yes, my lord. Thank you. Well, we've canvassed the city for information. What do you think? No one has the faintest idea what's happened to the city after all. They haven't heard the news about the crown contest either. You'd think that info would easily find its way up here. Has it always been like that? Not to this extent, which would indicate that something's suppressing the truth, that Lenigus is under some kind of control. Given everything that's happened to their city, the people here seem weirdly okay with it all. Yeah, that one guy even said Zugal had stopped listening to him. If that's true, these people are in big trouble. Everything that happens here is attributed to the Sovereign's will. It's the way people have been conditioned. Their belief runs deep. Nothing happens devoid of a reason. To them, it's all part of the Sovereign's grand plan. The Sovereign's plan. There is one thing I'm still not sure about. Just who is this person ruling over Lenigus? The Sovereign, of course. He rules from Rena while presiding over both Rena and Lenigus. Without the Lords or anyone in the middle doing his dirty work? Isn't Rena at least the same size as Dana? That's a pretty big dominion for one person to rule over. I would have thought ruling Lenigus alone would be difficult enough. The points you make are valid, though I confess I'd never given it much thought before. Here, the Sovereign's total authority is as natural as night turning to day. Come to think of it, I know nothing of the nature of how Rena itself is. <sighs> Shion, have you ever been... <clears throat> no, forgive me. Have you met or crossed paths with, or even heard of someone who's actually made a visit to the homeland? No, I haven't. Neither have I. In which case, I would imagine that... <clears throat> but no, surely not. Can it really be that no citizen of Lenigus has ever been there? Hold up, what are you getting at, Dohalim? Assuming what I believe to be correct, it's possible that no one on Lenigus has ever laid eyes on the actual Renan homeworld itself. No one but the Sovereign, that is. But what about trade and communication? There's got to be a flow back and forth, surely. Not if the Sovereign is imposing his will on Lenigus single-handedly. It could be a one-way street. But I thought you said that the Sovereign's all the way over on Rena. If that's the case, can he really rule directly over Lenigus from so far away? What if something were to happen to the city, like now? I'm beginning to wonder what the nature of this Sovereign even is. Alfin said he was forced into the role, right? Just before the ceremony. But Sovereign is also the title given to the almighty Renin ruler. So which one is it? Whoever wins the crown contest inherits the throne from his or her predecessor before becoming ruler over all of Rena and Lenigus. Thereafter, that individual is known as the Sovereign. Though, it would appear that the current ruler has gone silent. As for how Volron factors into all this, at this point, I no longer know what to believe. Three centuries ago, I became the Sovereign here on Lenigus. No. Not just became, I was forced to. Me, a Danon. Three hundred years later, we cross paths with Volron, who also bears the Sovereign's crest. That's not the only thing we have in common. We both became Sovereign without winning the Crown Contest. Do you think Volron was made Sovereign for the same reason? Because of that ceremony? I can't say for sure. 
But it certainly sounds like it. But that would mean that two sovereigns would need to exist at any one time. One whose job it is to rule, and the other for ceremonial purposes. We never did see Volron's body back in Ganeth Haros. Is a new ceremony underway with Volron at its center this time? Could that be what's causing all this strange activity here? Wait a second. You don't think Volron and the Red Woman are working together, do you? The ceremony can't go forward without the Renis Alma. The same one that the Red Woman stole. There's something else the ceremony needs. A maiden. And unless there's another one out there aside from me... Questions, questions, and yet more questions. Ones that it seems will remain unanswered until we can establish the Sovereign's identity. If the Forbidden Zone really is off-limits to everyone but the Sovereign, that seems as good a place as any to start. For the sake of liberating Dana, too. Then it's decided. That's where we need to go. One of the citizens mentioned a passage that she thought might lead to another section of the city. It could point us in the right direction. Let's go find it! Nobody left to run the show. I wonder what the people here are supposed to do. I mean, their sovereigns up on the Renin homeworld, and all their lords were sent to Dana. But Dohalim was a lord, right? Only current acting lords have power. Renin society is quite strict about such matters. Even if the other lords were still around, I doubt they'd be able to do much about the situation. I wonder what they'd think if they were here to see Lenigus now. Balsif, Ganabelt, Almadria, and Volron. Now that I think of it, aside from Dohalim, we know next to nothing about the other lords. Well, yeah, why would we? To us Danans, they were just enemies we needed to overthrow. Nothing more. I know. But seeing Renans in their own city, going about their day-to-day -day lives, it gets you thinking. It feels strange to imagine the Lords living here too, you mean? Yeah, a little. If you're that curious about them, why not try inquiring with some of the locals? Every Lord in their household has their share of supporters here on Lenigus. And luckily for us, the people here are unaware of the events on Dana, which means they should be more inclined to talk to us. in him to care about someone other than himself? Really? It's possible. A change in position can do much to alter one's perspective. So even he might have had something he wanted to protect.
to spread it throughout all of Lenigus then. Good thing the lines were down so she couldn't. It almost sounded like she was praising them too. Maybe there was more to the guy than at first glance. I shall refrain from commenting. Hmm. Get he was invested in helping Rena succeed. Doesn't that seem just a little inconsistent? I'm perhaps biased in this matter, I admit. However, in my mind, while all lords vie to become the next sovereign, they're also meant to serve as guardians of all of Rena. It seems like Annabelle also had people he cared about until the very end. So why couldn't he extend that to us Danids? This area doesn't look as badly damaged as that other district we went through. Indeed, the effects of Lenegus' transformation appear to be less pronounced here. Or, viewed another way, this area was simply luckier. Pardon me! fittest worldview. And some people here not only shared her belief, but championed it as morally right, too. That doesn't make it true. Too bad they couldn't see through her. Yeah.
<laughs> it seems like the people on Lenegas don't really know much about Volron either. I remember being quite surprised when the Lord of Ganet Harrows changed so abruptly. Didn't you have any doubts that something suspicious was going on? On the contrary. Remember, we Renans are raised to accept everything at face value. When you think about it, the families of Renan lords must see them differently than the rest of us. Yeah, despite the brutality they're known for. They must have had a lot on their shoulders, carrying all the weight and responsibilities of Renan society. Renans live in a world where strength and power determine their position in the social hierarchy, so they tend to grow up fiercely competitive. But their loyalty to their people is also strong. It's what brings them together against outside forces, and nothing exemplifies that more than the Lords. That's what makes them the guardians of all of Rena, so to speak. Right. It's the same reason Balsif hated my guts, and Ganabelt went after you, because we're threats to Rena. Guess that makes you an even bigger oddball than we thought. So, Alfin, have you gained anything from all of this? Yeah. I think it's made me realize that the Lords were all people, too. Balsif and the others, they all had their own circumstances to deal with as they went through life. Yeah, but still, just because they had loved ones in their lives doesn't mean... I know. What they did was horrible. I'm not trying to dispute that. But at the same time, they weren't incomprehensible monsters, either. They were individuals, just like the rest of us. So I guess... what I'm trying to say is... You're saying that they weren't bad because they were Renans, or because they were terrible monsters. Even if they did terrible things, they were still just people. Renwell... Am I wrong? Not at all. Being a Danon doesn't make you a good person. And being a Renan doesn't make you a bad one. I think that's something we've all seen. Shion and Dohalim definitely make a good case for it. And I'm going to keep doing my best to make sure I earn that trust. As a fellow human being above all else. There's something I just don't get. What is it? The crown contest itself has always gone ahead as planned, right? In which case, the current Sovereign of Rena should be whoever it was that won the previous contest. 
Yeah, that makes sense. So, who was it then? Han freaked Milgroth, the former lord of Cislodia, if memory serves. So then this Han freaked whatchamacallim, he's the current ruler of Rena? The last I heard, yes. Though admittedly, I haven't actually seen him since the end of the previous contest. You're saying that ever since becoming Sovereign, he's never actually shown himself on Lenegus? I guess over Holocom, maybe, but not in the flesh. Same thing goes for the Sovereign that came before him. Now that you mention it, I don't recall anyone ever visiting Lenegus from the Motherland, Sovereign or otherwise. And that never struck you as a little bit... odd? <sighs> when you live here, it's as if you're conditioned not to notice all these strange quirks and discrepancies. The question is then, by whom? And to what end? A new Renis Alma is supposedly created to coincide with every crown contest, meaning each victor is awarded their very own. In other words, if that's true, there should be as many of the things out there as there have been contests. True, but going on what we witnessed in Pelegian, it didn't look like the sort of thing that could be made to order. But if even the victor's speeches have been part of some grand deception, then where are they? Quite frankly, I'm not even sure what to believe anymore. You and me both. Though we are Renan by blood, neither of us even knew that such a thing as a Dark Master Core existed, remember? With any luck, the Forbidden Zone might give us some answers. No use standing around here chatting about it then. Let's get a move on. Isn't that the person that Avakir guy was- Shh. But why are you here? Wait, don't tell me you've given up on the crown contest and come crawling back home from Dana already. Nothing to say? Even though you were willing to kill Tarnigan to secure your position as Lord, you still- Kill? I'm here to take care of something. If you wish to continue this conversation, I only ask that you wait until I'm finished. Oh, of course. You always did prefer to take the coward's way out. Even after seven years and living on that Danon rock, you haven't changed one bit. But let me tell you, I haven't changed either. Not a day's gone by the past seven years that I haven't hated you. If killing me will bring you peace, then so be it. <laughs> Dohalim, what the hell are you saying? First, I have business to take care of. If it's vengeance you seek, I will grant you it. But you must wait. My sins are legion. Let me finish what I came to do. Then you have my word. I will let you do whatever brings you peace. Sure, that's it. Run away like always. You don't even have the courage to die. No wonder you leave it to someone else! You're just a coward! Dohalim. I apologize that you had to witness that. Is it true? What she said about you killing someone? Each of us have our pasts. I am no exception. Before, back in Menencia, you mentioned having taken a friend's life over the throne. Is that what she meant? The mistakes I made there were not my first, and may not be my last. I will say no more. Did you mean what you said? About letting her take your life if she wanted to? She has more right to my life than anyone. But you can't just... 
Whatever happens, I have sworn to put an end to the Crown Contest and to ensure continued coexistence in Menencia. I have no intention of expiring before I do so. There are far too many questions I still seek answers to. Besides, you have just as much reason to kill me as she does. Go, <laughs> Halim! Forgive me. Some things are best left unsaid. be some sort of rest and leisure area for the locals. You think? Man, these Renans sure know how to live it up, don't they? <sighs> it is something the matter, Dohalim? Before I went down to Dana, my friends and I, we... We used to gather at this very spot and play music together. Avakir, Faria, and Tarnigan. <laughs> That was a lifetime ago now. Tarnigan. He was the one that Faria mentioned, right? He was once my dearest, closest friend. <sighs> as well as Faria's betrothed. <sighs> Despite Faria's lower class upbringing, she possesses a tremendous talent for music. Entranced by her playing, I helped her overcome her sense of inferiority and introduced her to Tarnigan and Avakir. It was a time of great joy. Four people bound only by their love of music, with no care for social standing. Only the next song, the next melody. A friendship based on mutual respect in a society where everyone is a prisoner to their social class. You really are different, Dohalim. I suppose it's natural you would see it as strange. I would have, once. Now, I think the idea of breaking away from society's constraints and choosing your friends based solely on affection is something beautiful that's worth cherishing. Besides, it was that way of looking at the world that laid the foundations for coexistence in Menencia. Your praise does me too great an honor. I was merely following the wishes of my own heart. And even then, it only lasted until the crown contest began. After that, Tarnigan and I became fierce competitors for the position of Lord. Tarnigan had fallen for Faria. By becoming Lord, he aimed to wrest her from her humble origins and raise her to the highest echelons of society. But fate was not so benevolent. What happened? Tarnigan was no match for me in combat. On a level playing field, he wouldn't have stood a chance. 
But he was desperate and low on options, and he couldn't stand the thought of defeat. You mean he resorted to dirty tactics to try to win, right? But then why does Faria think... Wait, don't tell me she doesn't know. How could I tell her? Combined with the trauma of losing her beloved, and by her friend's hand, no less, she would have been devastated. So instead you let her go on hating you, so she could use that hate as a crutch for her grief? No. <laughs> That's not the same as running away, though. It is exactly the same. Unable to face the loss of my friend and the burden of my duty, instead I decried my fate and looked away from what I'd done. As for what happened after, that you already know. But if you hadn't become Lord, Menencia wouldn't be what it is now. The Danans there would still be suffering under Renan oppression like before. <sighs> Shion's right. What other lord would have treated me as you did? Anyone else and I would have been dead long ago. You've saved so many people, Dohalim. You saved me. It's thanks to you that I'm here today. So, try not to blame yourself. The burden you've placed on your own shoulders is too much for anyone to bear. Frank as always, but I shall do my best to heed your advice. Do you think he'll be alright? Yeah, I think so. He's got Kisara. It's important to have someone like that. I didn't realize how difficult it is just to be there for someone. Sometimes just knowing someone's on your side can be enough. And he knows, Xion. I promise he does. I hope you're right. Yeah? I never appreciated until recently just how much you were always there to support me. It goes both ways. You've helped me keep going more times than I can count. Maybe. I still wanted to say thank you. I see a medic and supply officer over there. If they know you're with me, they'll likely offer their assistance.
Look, we've got way more animals. I never imagined law would... Have a knack for husbandry. Makes sense. Against soldiers. Any way we can avoid fighting them? That all depends on them. Whatever happens, be ready. Well, so much for them not wanting to fight. Oh! I am Lord Dohalim of Elden Men and Fear. I command you. The rest of the city must be erased. No. Have they been brainwashed too? Brainwashed or not. If they want to fight, they got one. I'll heal you all! Soldiers seem different from the citizens we've come across so far. Yeah, they weren't big talkers, that's for sure. They just attacked without warning. They weren't in the least bit faced by Dohalim's presence either. Indeed, they seemed to recognize us as enemies, nothing more. And yet, traditionally, Lenigus hasn't been high on threats. A few frenzied zoogles during experiments here and there, but not much else. Their glazed-over eyes reminded me of the soldiers and slaves we met back in Ganeth Haros. The ones in blind devotion to Volron. I've never seen anything like that here on Lenigus before. Maybe someone doesn't want us here, and the soldiers are their way of letting us know. What with the Red Woman, the Sovereign, and Volron, we're starting to develop quite the growing list of adversaries. At least we'll know to keep our wits about us. Bearing fruit. 